Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This week we'll be working with data from a sensor called MODIS. And MODIS stands for the Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroradiometer. And it's actually on board two satellites. It's on board a NASA satellite named Terra and then a second NASA satellite named Aqua. So Terra was launched in late December 1999 and it passes over the equator about 10.30 in the morning. So basically we've got data from MODIS on board Terra since about 2000. And Aqua was launched in 2002. So we've got data from Aqua's MODIS sensor since 2002. And it, when you order the products, if it has a prefix MOD, that stands for MODIS on board the Terra satellite. And if the product is MYD, that's a product from the MODIS sensor on board the Aqua satellite. Okay, compared to the ABHR sensor, MODIS has sensor detectors optimized for both land and ocean remote sensing. And it has a, a 36 bands. So basically it has the red and near infrared band at 250 meter pixels. And then it has uh, reflective bands at 500 meter pixels, and then uh, many other bands at one kilometer pixel. And it's a vast improvement over AVHRR because we have onboard calibration of the sensor itself, and we have improved georeferencing of the data themselves. So there's many advantages of the MODIS. We have global coverage. We have in Alaska eight to 10 passes every day. We have a large swath width and all the MODIS data are available for free. And then also we have something called products in addition to imagery. So with MODIS, there's products that are produced by science teams. So for example, a product might be snow extent or another product might be hot spots or land surface temperature or a vegetation index product. So there's many products available that were produced by science teams that specialized in each product. Okay, there's some disadvantage with MODIS. One is that the native format is a strange format. It's the HDF EOS format, and HDF is hierarchical data format. And that's the format that's typically used uh, in the supercomputer world. And then it's also in a strange projection, since it's a global product, it's in a sinusoidal projection. So basically, when we use MODIS data, we typically have to reproject the sinusoidal raster into a projection like the Alaska Albers projection. And then, since it's a global product, some of the products are unreliable in Alaska. So for example, if you look at the MODIS land cover product, a lot of places in interior Alaska have been classified to be savanna or grassland, and they're not really savanna or grassland. They're basically uh, shrubland in the boreal forest. And then the leaf area index product, tundra leaf area index from shrub tundra, tends to be larger than boreal forest leaf area index, and that's not really true. It's simply the tundra shrub is broadleaf in the boreal forest leaf area areas tend to be spruce. Okay, so the MODIS products are served up as tiles, and each tile is 10 degrees wide and 10 degrees high. And you order them based on the vertical number. So here we've got vertical two, and then the horizontal number H. So here we've got H11. So if we want this tile which covers interior Alaska, we would look for the tile V02H11, and that would give us that tile, and it would be in this sinusoidal projection. And then there's a variety of land products. So if it's MOD, once again, it's from the MODIS sensor on board the Terra satellite. So some example land products would be surface reflectance, land surface temperature, land cover, vegetation index, hot spots, leaf area index, primary production, um, bi-directional reflectance or albedo, etc. Okay, and then every product has a pixel level quality code. 
and they're basically flagged as bits. So our first bit would be bits 0 and 1, and if both those bits were off, it represents the very best quality. And then we might have our next bit, bit 2. This is for the vegetation index, or uh, the leaf area index product. How was the leaf area index estimated? Was it estimated based on an empirical relationship with NDVI, or was it estimated based on the main um, radiative transfer method? And then we basically have these quality codes. So here's another one, bits four and five. Were, was the pixel clear, a mixed pixel, clear and clouds, or significant clouds, etc.? So every MODIS product has this quality code that we can use to screen out pixels that are not high quality pixels. Okay, fortunately for us, it's a lot easier with the NDVI product or the vegetation index product. Basically, they've got another band that's the reliability code band. And if it's a value of zero, it's a good data. We can use it with confidence. So basically what we're going to do this week is we'll always screen for any NDVI product for the reliability band, it must have a value of zero for it to be acceptable for our use. Okay, so some example non-vegetation land products would be what's termed the radiation budget variables. So surface reflectance, land surface temperature, snow extent, bidirectional reflectance and albedo, and basically hot spots. And we'll work with hot spots uh, next week. And then these products are available in a variety of resolutions in terms of spatial resolution and in terms of temporal resolution. So for example, for the reflectances and for the vegetation index, we can get at a spatial resolution as fine as 250 meter pixels. For the reflectances, we could get it every day, every eight days, etc. Snow cover, we can get it at a 500 meter spatial resolution or larger, daily, eight day or monthly, etc. Okay, and here are the MODIS vegetation products. So land cover is available at a one kilometer spatial resolution and it's available for every quarter globally. And then our vegetation index varies. We can get it as fine as 250 meters or as coarse as 25 kilometers and it's composited every 16 days or monthly, depending upon what your application is. And then basically we have leaf area index and a vegetation productivity at one kilometer resolution. Okay, so here's an example of the vegetation index product. So it would be either MOD 13 for the MODIS sensor on board Terra or MYD 13 for the MODIS sensor on board Aqua. And it's available at 250 meter pixel size composited every 16 days all the way up to 0 0.05 degrees composited on a monthly basis. So basically it's up to you as a user what pixel size you want and then what the temporal resolution. Do you want it as a 16 day composite period or a monthly composite period? Okay, so when you download the data, it comes as a HDF file, which is hierarchical data format. And it's got a name, so MOD would stand for the MODIS sensor onboard Terra. 13 would be the product, so in this case 13 is for the vegetation index product. And then A2 would be the level of that product. And then we have the year and then the Julian day, and then the tile. So in this case, our tile is H11V02, and that's in interior Alaska, and then the version of the product, so in this case, version 5. So basically, this product will be composited starting with day of year 129. So here's an example from the land, surf, land surface temperature product, and the first band is the daytime land surface temperature composited over an eight day period. So basically the maximum land surface temperature over that eight day period. And then the second band would be the quality control information for that land surface temperature. And then we have all sorts of other bands that typically we won't use. But whenever you look at this HDF 
band in arc map, it'll appear very funky. So here's what it's going to look like because it's in the sinusoidal projection. So it's going to look funky until we reproject it into an Alaska projection. So here we have that land surface temperature reprojected into the Alaska Albers projection. So this is the Alaska range. Cold pixels are dark, so this would be the glacier area. And then Wrangell St. Elias, all the snow and glaciers down here will be dark. Okay, there's two vegetation indexes. One is our standard NDVI, and that allows us to extend from the ABHR record into the MODIS record, which starts in 2000. And that's what we're going to use in Alaska. There's also an enhanced vegetation index, or EVI. And that is used typically in tropical areas where there's high biomass of plants. So basically, NDVI will saturate and plateau out as the leaf area index gets very large. And we don't have that problem in the boreal forest or in tundra. So basically, this is more appropriate for, for example, the Amazon. And in Alaska, NDVI is the appropriate vegetation index to use. Okay, so if you want more information about MODIS, I taught a workshop, um, and this is all available publicly. So if you go to this website, I've got a bunch of modules as PowerPoint presentations and then exercises that I used in this workshop. And this will be sort of a broader sort of look at MODIS compared to what we're going to do in this class. In this class, we're going to basically look mostly at the vegetation index of MODIS this week. And then next week we'll be using the MODIS hotspot product. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some quiz questions for you that will lead you to the next video session.